further ado, at this point, I want to introduce our next very important two speakers for this. And uh, here, thank you so much, Bindi Bindi. All right, so next, I have Shabnam, okay, who is here from South Africa, representing South Africa. She's from the World Council for Health. She's an activist, a journalist, a mediation lawyer, and arts education advocate. She's the founder and CEO of Transformative Health Justice, an MPC focused on safe, affordable and effective healthcare, as well as SAVR, Savers, an alternative and independent vaccine adverse effects reporting system. She also chairs the steering committee of Children's Health Defense Africa, and she launched the African Coalition to Stop the Treaty, basically the WHO Pandemic Treaty, uh, serves on the steering committee of World Council for Health, a health advocacy nonprofit organization for the people, by the people, co-chairs its Law and Activism Committee. Okay, and I also want to introduce James briefly before I bring them both. Uh, James Raguski is from the US, is a researcher, author, natural health proponent, activist who believes that the old systems are rightfully crumbling, so we must build their replacements quickly. And he has uncovered many documents regarding amendments to international law and is doing everything possible to expose the WHO's hidden agenda. So without much further ado, I will hand the time over to Shapna and James for them to present the segment. Thank you very much, Iris. Thank Can you. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I'd like to begin with some words of inspiration. The corporate revolution will collapse if we refuse to buy what they are selling, their ideas, their version of history, their wars, their weapons, their notions of inevitability. Remember this, we be many and they be few. They need us more than we need them. Another world is not only possible, she is on her way. On a quiet day, I can hear her breathing. And those are the words of Indian author and activist Arundhati Roy. Greetings from South Africa. Salam, Sanbonani, Namaste. And of course, um, a massive and heartfelt thank you to the, Af to the Asian Coalition for Health. Um, Iris, we began this process about two weeks ago, where we sat in conversation and spoke about the need to retain health freedom as a united people across the world, not divided by artificial bodies. And here we are two weeks later, and I couldn't be more proud of you and the organizers of the Asian Coalition for Health. I remember saying we need continental co coalitions, we need intercontinental coalitions, and here we are. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Today, I will be facilitating an interview on the critical topic of the power grab by the World Health Organization, uh, in particular via the International Health Regulation Amendments due to happen this May 22nd to 28th in Geneva and convened or co controlled and co coordinated by the World Health Assembly. It is an essential topic for us to unpack in particular because simultaneously the WHO has also been trying to put together a global uh, pandemic treaty. And as many of you might know, there's also a campaign to hashtag stop the treaty. There is a difference between the two the Global Pandemic Treaty and the International Health Regulations, but they certainly are connected. Today, we want to focus on the International Health Regulations because May 22nd to 28th is literally about four weeks away. A little about the success we've achieved thus far. Uh, round one of comments on the new treaty, remember the new treaty, which is meant to be confirmed in 2024, uh, saw perhaps thousands of comments to the WHO. There was a round one of public participation via written comments and video on the 12th and 13th of April. Um, our statistics tell us 450 million accessed the campaign that was initiated by and supported by the allies of the World Council for Health. Round two happens in June, 16 to 17th of June. We believe the, reason, the only reason WHO said, okay, we'll have a public participation process, even though it was a sham, is because we kept saying without public participation, no agreement is valid. No agreement is recognized by the people of the world. And I want to pause there to say the traditional leaders from New Zealand 
wrote to the WHO and the United Nations to say, we do not recognize your authority over us. You may have an agreement with the corporate state of New Zealand. You do not have an agreement with the people of New Zealand. And so that word sovereignty is one that must thread every conversation that we have. I want to turn then to our interview with James Rogaski, who is, of course, my friend, a researcher, an activist, an expert in the area of the power grabs by the WHO. And so, of course, we'll continue to be working together closely with all our allies around the world to make sure that health freedom is not just a vision, but a reality. And of course, we'll be talking about the international health regulations. So let's pause our minds away from Stop the Treaty and let's turn to the international health regulations. James Rogaski, welcome and thank you for joining us today. It's wonderful to have you at the Asian Coalition for Health launch. Thank you so very much for having me. And um, I am here to, to sound the alarm, okay? But I am also here to share with you my enthusiastic belief. I absolutely know that we have an opportunity to stop the first domino from falling. If you've ever seen dominoes mm -hmm. lined up and someone knocks one over and then they all spread apart and everything is just falling down, um, think how much easier it would be to just prevent that first domino from falling. And that's what we're Absolutely. dealing with. Today is, I guess, the 23rd. So we're less than a month, um, nearly four weeks away from the start of the World Health Organization's um, assembly. And what we need to do is to not be fearful, not to cower and, and think that they are this almighty, powerful um, force. Uh, if, if anyone has ever seen The Wizard of Oz, and there are many other movies, um, it, it's all just because you give them that power, because you think they are more powerful than you. You think they are more worthy than you, but they are not. Each and every one of you is a sovereign human being, but you sometimes, uh, I believe one of the previous um, speakers uh, spoke from the book of Revelations, and he talked about casting spells. It's not the World Health Organization, it's the World Hypnosis Organization, and they've cast a spell on everyone, and you think that they have power and authority over you, well, reach down inside to your God and realize that you are sovereign, you have all the power you need, but you forget that because of the spells that they cast and the drugs and the injections that they give to you. Thank you, James, for those inspirational words and waking us up. We're here to wake up Asia and wake up the world. So here we go. I've got three questions for you, James, and uh, in between there may be a couple more, but I'm mindful of time. And so the first question is, which are the articles in the international health regulations that are due to be amended uh, if they get their way this May? Uh, that you want to alert the world to? And what is the impact of these amendments? In, in the, um, with the issue of time, okay, just to be concise, because all of the information is available on the websites that, that we'll provide for you. The international health agreements are an existing treaty and it's different from the proposed pandemic treaty. The proposed pandemic treaty is an absolute evil monster. OK, but it's a little bit down the road. The international health regulations were actually started in 1969. And, you know, they had a good beginning. It, it was, well, if there was certain diseases like smallpox or cholera, you know, we would work together. But they have morphed and grown. And the amendments that were proposed by the United States are mind bogglingly confusing. And there are 13 different articles in the amendments that will be changed. Words will be added and words will be subtracted. But for the sake of time, I just really wanna focus on one specific amendment, which is going to, it, it would seek to change, and we're not gonna let this happen. It would seek to change Article 12, um, and the important parts of that are uh, sections two, three, and five. And in summary, currently the regulations limit the um, authority of the WHO. The way the um, regulations are currently written, 
the WHO must respect each country's sovereignty and get their agreement before declaring what they refer to as a public health emergency of international concern. Now, we all know what happened in 2020. We, we kind of know, we think we know, you know, things happen that we don't understand what happened. And, and so China pushed back a little bit on, on WHO and a couple of days went by, maybe a week, and then they finally reached an agreement and, and they declared a, a public health emergency uh, of international concern. The WHO is seeking to take away the need for them to get, you know, I'll, I'll put it in this sense, Singapore's approval. They want to be able to walk into Singapore and 194 countries around the world and say, we are telling you that you have a problem and we're declaring an emergency on your sovereign land and there's not a darn thing you can do about it. And they want to be able to do it in 48 hours. They also want to be able to declare an intermediate alert and a regional alert. And it's just a, it's just a blatant power grab. Can I share this? Um, the Thank you, James. Does this help? Absolutely. Job done. Uh, do you want to talk to this uh, visual, James, before I- I, I would like for you to talk to it for a little bit, please. Um, All right. Your opinion, please. So as you can see, this is a visual and it's a very effective one, hashtag stop the amendments. And essentially this visual that James has created is telling us or giving us an idea of the time frame that we have uh, in terms of this campaign, hashtag we are sovereign. So act one is of course what James has been talking about. And that's the amendment that the US has proposed and will be considered at the 75th World Health Assembly in Geneva this May. That is act one. And we do believe that we will succeed in stopping these amendments by consistent campaigning up until the end of May. However, if we do not succeed in stopping these amendments, and I'll be talking to some of the um, multi-pronged ideas we can use at the end of this conversation with James, but if we do not succeed by the end of May, Article 59 to 62 of the International Health Regulations do provide that every member nation of the WHO has the opportunity and the right to reject the amendments individually. There will be a six month period ending in November this year for member nations to opt out. I just want to add a proviso there, November this year. And if we do not succeed at that point, in effect, what we will have is a one world government using health by stealth for a one world government. Act three refers to the pandemic treaty that James and I have been highlighting is separate to, but connected with the international health regulations. Those are due to be confirmed in 2024. We don't, um, we don't ignore them. We know it's equally important, uh, but perhaps a bit of a diversionary tactic, whereas the international health regulations is, is what needs our urgent attention right now. And that wonderful website that James has put up, don'tyoudare.info, includes some of his wonderful Substack articles, very informative, links included, as well as contacts of people that should be emailed, written to, um, and, and whose conscience can perhaps we appeal to, but more importantly, to remind them of our sovereign rights to make our own decisions about our health and our freedom. James, anything you want to add there? Yes, um, the sorcerers at the World Hypnosis Organization have cast their spell on people and they make it think, they make people think that whatever they say has the force of law. And I actually have found myself making a, a, a slight typographical error. And I find myself re uh, referring to the international health recommendations. The United States actually changed one of its laws five years ago. And it literally says that in the United States, we can declare in, in our country a public health emergency if the WHO director merely makes a recommendation about something that should be done for uh, you know, a health emergency. It is astonishing how people who run government and they're in government positions fall victim to the hypnosis of if you, if you forget that you're sovereign and someone says that they have authority over you, 
and, and you lose connection to your God and, and you think that that man or woman is able to tell you what to do, you are the source of the issue that needs to be corrected. And so the, the main task at hand is to spread the word um, with the people's treaty.com, which is, it, it's an explanation of the rights that you may have forgotten. Now, act three is yellow and, and the close observer will notice that they're not all three red. Um, the pandemic treaty has an abomination of things that they're considering. And I believe that what we need to do is to start saying, no, 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 no. We don't wanna give you more power. We do wanna change international law, but we want it to be so that we reclaim our power. And so there are many actions that are coming uh, tomorrow. This is a present for me. Tomorrow is my 62nd birthday and I'm celebrating tomorrow by, I have about six articles that I will be publishing and it's gonna lay out some of the actions that people can do. Step number one is to just become more aware, realize that the talk of a pandemic treaty is way off in the future. It's a, it's a horrible thing that we do need to know about, but right now, these laws were meant to be hidden. They were meant to have no one see, uh, I'm sorry, these proposed amendments to the international health regulations were meant to not be seen at all. The assembly was supposed to happen somewhere in the middle of the assembly, they would vote on it. It would go back underground and they would have six months to just keep it hidden while they change all of the laws and then it would pop up again in November just in time for the winter flu season. And, and we would be, as Shabnam said, facing uh, uh, you know, one world government. And I firmly believe that by, um, by June, you know, after this assembly is done, I, I, I am fully prepared to claim victory in, in a battle because they never stopped the war. Shabnam? Thank you, James. So I think we've covered the first uh, two questions, which is highlighting some of the uh, amendments that are, you know, clearly a power grab and intended to subvert the sovereignty of countries, but also the autonomy of human beings to make decisions about themselves. And human beings intrinsically are full of wisdom and compassion, and we know how to care for each other. In South Africa, in Africa, we have the word called Ubuntu, or Ubuntu Gumuntu Gavantu, I am because you are. We are here to look after each other. So James, finally, before I conclude, what is your call to action? What are you asking the public to do? Obviously, you have to be informed. So um, go to stopthewho.com, go to don'tyoudare.info, do, go to thepeoplestreaty.com and, and learn. Um, here's where I shock everybody that I talk to, okay? I'm in the United States. And so, you know, people know that from country to country, there's different area codes and, 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 and calling codes. My phone number is 310-619-3055. If you're, you know, wanting to help and, and be active, call me anytime. And it's 310-619-3055. I find myself not in the eye of the storm, but in the eye of a tornado. And everything is spinning around and it's been joyous. The people who have called me, the people that I meet, um, I'm, I'm very enlivened, you know, with what um, uh, is, is happening. The energy of, you know, these good people is, is lifting me up. It's, you know, it's just wonderful. What we need to do, and Shabnam, I don't believe I've told you this. I haven't had a chance. This will be news to you as well. Um, I I'm, I'm, went to school for computers and I understand, you know, websites. And I went looking for on the World Health Organization, a list of the delegates who will be supposedly representing all of us around the world, because this is not just the United States issue, it's the entire world. So there's supposed to be 194 um, countries, they get 100, you know, each gets one vote, but they have three delegates officially, a chief deputy and regular delegate, but the rich companies bring an enormous delegation and the, the less wealthy countries bring a few other people, but there are, literally thousands of people who go to Geneva to do what they do at, at these kinds of conventions. And so I just would like to ask everyone a rhetorical question. It's not a fair question because I know that I was able to find the previous lists of delegates from you know, the 71st um, assembly, the 72nd, the 73rd, the 74th. And when I get to where on the website, because it's all the same, they haven't published the list of delegates to this upcoming assembly. And 
the first call to action for everybody is to reach out to your health um, ministry, your um, what is the equivalent of the State Department, your foreign ministry, and, and everyone, talk to everyone, just ask them a very simple question. Do you have any idea who is representing you before the who's assembly in May? And if we don't even have the ability to learn who is supposed to be representing us, let alone contact them, let alone have them listen and be able to give them our opinions and, and, and our wishes, um, we do not live in a world that is paying attention to us. And the first step is in each country around the world, um, ask your government officials and demand of your government officials who is representing you before the who. And going forward from that, you know, um, contact me, get on the, the website. We have a lot of things um, that we're working on in terms of actions. Um, but the main thing is for people just to wake up and understand that it's not about anything to do with the pandemic treaty down the road. This is happening right now. You better get moving. And when you go to a wedding, I don't know how it is everywhere in the world, but in the United States, they, they ask people, oh, well, you know, would you like to object to this union of, of, of two people? And there's a saying that says, you know, speak now or forever hold your peace. Well, I would like to say to everybody here, you better start yelling at your um, government officials now or you will be forever wearing a muzzle. And I bring a, 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 a words of hope and, and positivity because I think we can stop this first domino from falling, but it's gonna take all of us. And so I encourage you to um, pay attention, learn, spread the word and take action. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, James and uh, Shabnam for this excellent and very urgent message that the world needs to hear. Okay, we don't want to have COVID stormtroopers in our backyards. We don't want unelected people representing us, controlling us and giving the shots of whatever, whatever that is to happen. Okay, so we'd like to, to take action. Okay, please visit those websites. Singapore will do our own actions shortly after this. I have been given the, the speaker's corner on the 7th of May. Since there's no more, no jab, no job, I'm going to use it to do the stop the world uh, the, the the health treaty okay i will ask for permission and i'll update all of you